When identifying the bony landmarks of the hip and pelvis, a good place to start is the iliac crest. This landmark is a curved bony ridge that can be found with the patient in standing, using flat hands perpendicular to the patient's body. By following the iliac crest backwards, we get to the posterior superior iliac spine, the PSIS. The PSIS are visible as the dimples in the lower back, just above the sacroiliac joint. If we move forwards from the iliac crest, we can identify the anterior superior iliac spine, or ASIS, approximately 30 centimeters apart. If we come further down from the ASIS, we get to the anterior inferior iliac spine, or AIIS, the origin of the long head of the rectus femoris muscle. This is deeper than the ASIS, but still palpable on most models. With the patient in supine, we can identify the greater trochanter of the femur. This landmark is located about 10 centimeters directly underneath the middle of the iliac crest on the lateral thigh. The gluteal muscles are palpated beneath the iliac crest and the greater trochanter is palpated as a hard bony prominence where many of the glutes attach. To confirm this, we can rotate the patient's thigh from internal to external rotation and the greater trochanter should move forwards and backwards respectively. The pubic symphysis and pubic tubercles are usually easiest palpated by moving distally from the lower abdomen. Due to the location of the pubic symphysis, it is often more professional to ask the patient to identify these landmarks themselves by describing their location, and if needed, the therapist can then confirm or palpate as required. The ischial tuberosities or sitting bones can be found in sideline. As the hamstrings originate from the ischial tuberosity, you can follow the line of the hamstrings up to find the ischial tuberosity of that leg.